Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about body cavities and membranes of the body. When we discuss the cavities of the body, we can be very general or we can be very specific. For example, imagine you are traveling to Australia and you run into another U.S. citizen. After the initial greeting, you might ask where they live. That person would most likely first start with the state they live in. If it happens to be your state or a state you've gone to, you might then ask more specifics like their town or their city. We can do the same thing with our body cavities. There are two main body cavities, the dorsal body cavity and the ventral body cavity. The dorsal cavity is toward the posterior or dorsal side of the body, and it contains two more specific cavities, the cranial cavity, which holds the brain, and the vertebral cavity, which houses the spinal cord. The ventral cavity is also made up of several other cavities. The thoracic cavity is superior to the abdominal cavity, which contains the digestive organs. These two cavities are separated by the diaphragm. The pelvic cavity is the most inferior of the three cavities in the ventral cavity and contains the urinary bladder and the reproductive organs. The thoracic cavity is made up of several even more specific cavities called the pleura and the pericardium. The pleura contains the lungs and the pericardium contains the heart. To look at an anterior view, you can see that each lung is within its own pleural cavity and the heart is within the pericardial cavity. Both of these spaces are within the thoracic cavity, which is inside the ventral cavity. The three starred cavities are lined with serous membranes. This is a type of membrane that covers and lines internal cavities. You might think of the lungs as being open to the outside, but the membranes that cover the lungs cover the outside of the lung, not the internal air spaces. So a serous membrane is a double-layered membrane that covers a cavity and helps to reduce friction. Imagine if you half inflated a balloon and held it in your hand. If you took your other hand and made a fist and slowly pushed your fist against the balloon and pushed inward, you would end up with something like this. Your fist would be wrapped in a continuous double-layered membrane that was made from the invagination of that balloon. In between the two layers of the latex would be a space. In a biological system, your fist would be the organ and the balloon would be the serous membranes. We call these two layers different things. The membrane closest to the organ is the visceral membrane and the side further away is the parietal membrane. Remember that the serous membranes line body cavities that are not open to the outside. Each of these cavities has its own name. The membranes around the lungs are called the pleura. The membranes around the heart are called the pericardium. And the membranes around the abdominal cavity are the peritoneum. Remember that these are serous membranes and have double layers. So the layer closest to the heart would be the visceral pericardium. The layer further away from the heart would be the parietal pericardium. The layer closest to the lungs is the visceral pleura. The layer further away from the lungs is the parietal pleura. And likewise, for the abdominal cavity, the layer closest and deepest towards the organs is the visceral peritoneum and the layer further away is the parietal peritoneum. We have other membranes in our bodies as well. The serous membranes line the closed cavities. These membranes secrete serous fluid into the space between the visceral and parietal membranes. Mucous membranes line the cavities in the body that are open to the outside. Places like the mouth, the esophagus, the trachea, and the anus are all open to the outside of the body and are lined with mucous membranes. These membranes are often associated with goblet cells, which secrete mucus to protect and moisten these areas. Synovial membranes line the joint capsules throughout the body. 
These membranes secrete synovial fluid into the joint to reduce friction and lubricate the joint. The meninges are membranes that cover and protect the brain and the spinal cord in the central nervous system. You may have heard of meningitis, which is an inflammation of these membranes. It can be life-threatening because the swelling of the meninges membranes puts pressure on the brain and the spinal cord. That's it for today. See you in class.